All right, welcome back everybody. So today what we're going to do is create a clean, simple, and modern looking slideshow within DaVinci Resolve using all custom animations and custom transitions. Without further ado, let's take a quick look at what we're going to be building today. Now, before we get into the video, I just wanted to ask, what would you like to see in future episodes? Let me know in the comment section below. If this video is helpful at all, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. And now, let's get right into this. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop the photos that we're going to be working with into our media pool and then drop them into our timeline. Now I think that the five second duration that it defaults to is a little bit long for what we're working with today. So I'm going to highlight all of them and then click Control D on the keyboard to change the clip duration. From there, I'm just going to drop that down to three seconds and hit change. From there, it's just as simple as dragging them so that they are lined up back to back. Perfect, step one done. Next thing we need to do is just make sure that every photo that we're working with is completely taking up all of the screen. As you can see, this one isn't. So what we're going to do is just zoom in just so that we have a little bit more to work with here. And this one isn't as well. Now, all of these images are just stock photos I grabbed from the internet and I wasn't really checking their size, but the majority of the time photos have a different aspect ratio so they're not completely going to fit anyway now that everything is completely lined up we can get working on building the actual slideshow so for this first one i think all i want to do is have it zoom in so i'm going to create a keyframe at the beginning and then i'm going to go to the end of that first image it is still the first image even though it's showing the second one you know that because the first one is highlighted in red i'm going to create another keyframe there and just zoom it in to 1.1. For the next image, I think what I want to do is a zoom out. So I'm going to increase this to 1.3, go to the end of the image by clicking on the end, creating another keyframe, and then changing the zoom to 1.2. For the next image, I think that we're going to need a pan sideways. So I'll just increase this to 1.3 just so we have a few more pixels to work with. And then I'll create a position marker at the very beginning of that image. From there, I'm going to change the position to 100. Then I'll go to the end of that first image, create another keyframe and change it to minus 100. For the image that follows, I'm going to, again, I think just do another uh, translation, except this, I think I want to go vertical. So I'm going to change that to 1.3, again, to give us a few more pixels to work with and create a keyframe at the beginning of that image as well. Now this time I'm going to change the Y to minus 100 and then go to the end of the image and change that to plus 100. And then we can see it's moving vertically. For the final image, I think all I want to do is have it zoom in. So I'll create a keyframe there, go to the end and create another keyframe with the zoom of 1.3. So now if we play this back, we have a simple slideshow that you see in a lot of industry, real estate in particular. I see this all the time, very basic uh, animations that are happening on the photos. Nothing wrong with it, but in my opinion, it's a little bit boring and I think we can do a lot better. So to create our custom transitions, I'm just going to go right here at the beginning on the first uh, transition that we need to create. I'm going to go to our video uh, toolbox here under video transitions and drag and drop the push transition between the two images. Now, personally, I like to have it a little bit shorter than this. I don't like a full second of transitions. I think that's a little bit slow. 
So I typically aim for about 0.75 or 0.8 of a second. So in this case, the math is easy to get it at 0.8. We just have to change this to 18 frames. And then if I just play this back, you can see it's going to push the image off. And it's very linear looking. And as you know, I hate the linear look. I think it just looks unnatural and robotic. So I'm going to change the ease to a zoom in and a zoom out. And that'll change it more to that Bezier style curve that I like a lot more. So as you can see, what it did was it starts off slow, speeds up in the middle, and slows down at the end. From there, and this step is completely optional, play around with it, see if it works for your particular uh, settings there. But I like to add a little bit of a feather, which is going to soften this middle edge between the two images. And I like to set it at around 250. So you can see a little bit of a blur happening, a little bit of merging happening, especially here on the potted plant. You can see it turns a little bit clear. You can see the carpet coming through. And I just, I think it gives a, a nicer, softer transition, even though it's going to be a little tough to see, but it just does a little bit something to the image that I like. And now, if we play back this transition, we can see it just slides from one image right into the other. But what I don't like about it right now is that there's there's no motion blur. There's a lot of motion, a lot of really quick motion happening on the screen right now. Normally, if you did see that, the camera would pick up some blur. So let's simulate that. Let's add that right in. To do that, we're going to go under the um, effect section, under the toolbox, and add an adjustment clip on top. Now I'm just going to trim this down so it's the size of our clip by dragging the beginning to match up with the beginning and the end of the adjustment clip to match with the end of our transition. From there, we can go under the toolbox, under filters, under resolve effects, and we can drag and drop the directional blur on top of our adjustment clip. From there, just make sure to have the adjustment clip highlighted and go under open effects. So now we're adding in our, our motion blur and the strength that I like to use is right around 0.85. I think that gives a nice solid effect for what we're going for. And we can see that there's two issues that are happening right now. First of which is this horrible black edge that's coming up and to get rid of that we just have to change our border type from black to reflect and perfect looking a lot better already the second thing is this is a sideways transition and our effect is at a 45 degree angle so to change that we're just going to change the blur angle to 180 degrees which is going to put it sideways at 180 degree angle and that's following the motion that we're doing there perfectly. The issue, as I'm sure you've already noticed, is that it's blurred 100% of the time, which is not something that we want. So to fix that, we can go to the middle of the clip where the blur is going to be the strongest and create a keyframe. And then we can go to the beginning of the clip, create another keyframe there and turn the blur strength all the way down. We're going to do the same thing at the end and turn down that blur strength there as well. So now if we play this back, we can see it blurs towards the middle and there's nothing happening at the beginning and ends. But to me, this still doesn't look quite natural and that's because the push animation that we created before has a Bezier style curve, which means it's slow at the beginning, speeds up in the middle and slows down at the end, while our blur strength is completely linear, not having any of that transition, uh, not having any of that curve, sorry. And we can fix that by basically tricking our eye into believing there's a curve by using this, the global blend. So what we can do is go to the middle and create a keyframe there and leave it at zero, which is going to be 100% strength. From there, I'm going to go back three frames, one, two, three, create another point there. And then from the middle, I'll go forward three and create another point there. These ones we're not going to touch just because we want it to be at full strength. At the beginning, we're going to create another keyframe 
and turn the blend all the way up to one, meaning that there's going to be absolutely no blur at this point. We're going to do the same thing at the end of the clip. Now I'm going to jump back to the beginning of the clip and click forward on my arrows on my keyboard until I find the first sign of motion. One, two, three, there it is. We can see on the left side, if I jump between the second and third frame, we can see something is starting to pop in. So at this point, I want to create another keyframe there and change this to 0.8. I chose this value just because it's still relatively small. There's going to be very little blur happening and that's exactly what we're going for. We want very little to happen at the beginning and for it to ramp up towards the middle. So by creating this blend, it's going to very quickly ramp up. If I go frame by frame, you can see exactly what happens and then it gets strongest in the middle. So then I'm just going to replicate that at the other end of the clip, go back three, create a keyframe and change that to 0.8. So now if we go frame by frame, we can see it's going to more or less follow that Bezier curve push animation that we created before, where there's very little happening, almost no blur. And as it starts coming in, we can see the blur start to ramp up and then really go wild in the middle and slow down as everything is stopping and coming into, and coming into frame here. And there we have it. There's that first transition done. And I think that looks pretty good. So let's copy this to our next section. So I'm going to click on the push animation, hit control C on my keyboard, and then click between the next two photos and just make sure that both sides of it are highlighted before hitting control V to paste. From there, I'm going to copy the adjustment clip that we created, move the playhead over to align with the beginning of our next uh, transition and paste it on top. Now with this one, I just want to change the push from a left to a right. And in this case, it's still going to be a horizontal translation. So we don't need to change the, um, we don't need to change the blur angle here. So if I play this one back, you can see it's going to be transitioning from right to left. The blur is still in the proper direction and then the clip continues on in that same direction. Perfect, so now we've created two. For the next one, we're going to copy that push again, paste it over top, and this time I want it to be a push up. From there, I will copy this over, paste it over top, and this time we're going to need to change the blur angle to 90 because this is going to be a vertical motion. So if I play this one back, can see it follows the animation that we created before has that vertical blurring and keeps going following the animation that we created perfect and then for the final one I'm just going to copy that over and in this one I'm just going to push it down just to show you that it doesn't always have to be a, uh, a movement that follows you can mix and match them but if you're doing a translation, try to make the clip follow along. But in this case, we're just doing a zoom and it still works perfectly fine. All right, and there we have it. We've created a slideshow from scratch using our own animations on the photos, as well as custom made transitions for between the photos. And what you can do is use this as sort of a jumping off point. You don't have to follow along with exactly what I did. You can play around with that push animation. You can play around with the slide. Use this as a, as a jumping off point to create your own slideshows. And as always, if the video was helpful, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you found this helpful so you won't catch any future videos. And if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see going forward, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye now.